Look Outreach is underwritten by the generous support of Munter Enterprises. Family owned and operated since 1972, integrity is important, as our family name is on every project. Our word is our bond. Munter Enterprises. Just build it. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to Driving 101. I am the driver, and you, here is the passenger. <laughs> <laughs> That's a private joke right before we went on air. <laughs> this is Ben Lapham. He's running for fourth ward, Common Council in Glens Falls. Welcome, Ben. Thank you very much, Jess. <laughs> you going to let me drive? Sure. Oh, okay. Okay. You're in the seat, right? Okay. You've got the wheel. <laughs> I got the wheel. Uh, ben is running in Glens Falls for a Common Council on the Green Line and also the, what is it, 12804? 12801 line. So oh, that's for okay. the zip code at, of Glens yeah, Falls. Sure, of course. So that's uh, Robin and Rich Serino, Robin Parkenhagen and Rich Serino yes. are running for Councilor at large and mayor. Yes, absolutely uh, right. Along with us, so we're line mates. We're like a, a hockey checking line, I guess. Oh, I got it. <laughs> hey, um, the uh, Glens Falls, uh, I live in Glens Falls. We have, my wife and I have lived there for a better part of 12 years. Wonderful town to live in. I love the neighborhoods. Um, a lot of changes in the, in the past 10 years. Sure. Seems like the focus has always been on downtown. And I noticed in your priorities that increase homeowner autonomy. And uh, you know, that's an interesting phrase. Sure. Right, you know what I mean? Everybody wants to talk about downtown development, tax breaks for downtown and whatever. Uh, we got quite a few homeowners in Glens Falls. Uh, why did you put that down as a priority? Well, it's kind of twofold. So there's been a focus uh, downtown of development uh, and you know, that's good. Mm -hmm. But I think that our neighborhoods around downtown have been kind of lacking from mm -hmm. getting some of the attention that they're getting downtown. And also that there's kind of a thing that with, with government that you have like, oh, I've brought this to you, mm -hmm. you know? So I would feel like if the homeowner's autonomous, then the government's working for them and not doing things for them. Yes, I've got it. Uh, and quite honestly, as a homeowner, um, and a, a not you're we're pretty much neighbors. You're yeah. not too far away from where That's we right. are, vice versa. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I totally I totally understand that. Um, you know, the Greens are very active in Glens Falls, more so than in some of the other communities that that we uh, represent and we talk to. Um, now, in Glens Falls, I, maybe you can help straighten something out for me. Okay. Uh, the two major political parties, Republican and Democratic parties, sometimes it's very hard to even find a piece of paper between the two of them. Um, it seems like the Greens and Glens Falls offer a true democratic alternative. Yeah, the democratic, I guess, the little d. Yes, right, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> and, uh, um, so like one of the things to say, just to your point, is that uh, the, uh, the incumbents in Glens Falls yes. are, are running a, what's called a unity ticket. Yes, that's right, that's and, what we're referring to. Yeah, and they're, they're uh, cross-endorsing one another. Uh -huh. So a lot of times Greens will say there's not much difference between the Democrats and the Republicans. Uh -huh. And in this case, when the Democrats and the Republicans are endorsing one another, there really isn't much difference. Also, incumbents already have this advantage, uh -huh. so they've doubled down on the advantage. Right, right. I, I, I see that. Now, I'm sure there's uh, reasoning for that coming from anybody who's uh, in a Democratic or the Republican Party. I, I'm but sure they're saying that we get along, we work well with one another, but there's a certain point where you start to say, hey, you guys are maybe getting along well with each other, but maybe not with the newspaper of record. Yeah, and right. that's why you have these lawsuits. Yes, yes, gotcha. I'm referring to a lawsuit with the Post Star, by the way, uh, which if you want more information, you can, you can look it up. Um, the one thing when I was looking at your slate, Ben, mm -hmm. um, I really noticed it, it really did take some thought. You know, tax breaks, and all, you know, usually see all of these kind of grandiose statements, some of which are unfulfillable, sure. you know, uh, some of which don't really play to the democratic process. Um, but I, there was a couple that I wanted to um, note. Uh, sensible code enforcement. Sure. Explain that. Okay. So one of the things with the code enforcement is it seems like maybe sometimes people get uh, uh, reported by neighbors with you know some sort of agenda mm -hmm. so that i had an issue last year mm -hmm. where i had sunflowers growing out in front of my house how dare you <laughs> <laughs> which were harboring bees or, or something <laughs> terrible but uh the uh uh I, I got the the kind of notification 
through the mail mm -hmm. uh, to you know remedy my situation with the sunflowers. Even when I called up, I don't mm -hmm. know if I remedied it properly or not, mm -hmm. but I didn't get any further uh, you know uh, uh, things in the mail about yes. it or any yeah. fines or anything. But that seems to me seems not particularly sensible. Oh, also uh, maybe a little bit of a uh, waste of time. Yeah. Um, you know, greater transparency you put down. Uh, you do see that everybody wants their government to be more transparent. But I think to the point that we were talking about earlier, that choice is very sure. important to promote transparency. Absolutely. Yes, and I think okay. also that transparency encourages people to get involved in the process mm -hmm. and that when people are involved in the process, maybe more people that really have, you know, good ideas come to the forefront. Mm -hmm. And maybe we come up with some plans that are less expensive mm -hmm. and maybe have a greater impact. Yes, and more efficient too. Hey, um, I ask every candidate this. Uh, you know, we are living in an era where you hear th phrases like drain the swamp and all these other kinds of phrases. Some of them are empty. But uh, I do like the idea that people with varied backgrounds decide to run for office and are not necessarily what you might promote as career politicians. Sure. What's your background? So my background is I'm a software engineer. I've uh -huh. worked for... Uh, uh, Grace Note slash Nielsen. Oh, I mean, the, yeah, the sure. sign's the about to change, company. I think, next week. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was Tribune Media Services when I started. Yeah, sure, uh, So I work as a, uh, as a software engineer, so I work on a lot of projects where mm -hmm. I work with a number of people, sometimes with other companies, mm -hmm. to get things accomplished. So there's a lot of analysis work and there's a lot of development work that goes into it. And I think those are, are traits that really transfer well to uh, government service. Sure, especially in a council setup, because sure. you're trying to work with each other. Absolutely. And I would assume that uh, a fair amount of negotiation goes along with that, which, of course, is also key to getting anything, any legislative action. Absolutely. You know, uh, taken care of. Uh, well, Ben, real pleasure to meet you. Okay. And I'll look for you in the neighborhood there. Yeah. I'll, I'll see you, know, like, walking my dogs around now that I know you're a dog guy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet Good you as well. You. Thank you very much. You're welcome. To see this interview again, you can head to our website, looktvonline.com.